We're here with the director and cast of Bruised. I want to welcome you all. Uh, we have uh, Shamir Anderson, who plays Immaculate in the film. Aiden Canto plays Desi. Sheila Atim, who plays Bobby Budokan. And the director and star of the film, who plays Jackie Halle Berry. Welcome to all of you. Thanks so much for being here. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Um, Hallie, I want to start with you. Uh, as an actor, you have shown such range on screen. You've played superheroes, supervillains, and people who are just struggling to survive, like Jackie. Um, and for the first film that you were going to direct, uh, what was it about Jackie and her story that drew you to her? I think I saw so much of who I am in her story. Um, being a woman of color, a black woman in this industry, I think I understand what it has meant to fight over the years to find a place for myself and oftentimes make a way out of no way. And right away, that's what connected me to this character. I'm, I'm always connected to the underdog. I've felt like the underdog um, at so many moments, not only in my personal life, but in my professional life. I understand the struggle and the fortitude and the tenacity uh, that it takes to uh, survive and to rise above the odds. And that was the first thing that connected me. Whenever I think of a character, I have to feel like they can sit in my body. Mm -hmm. And she sat squarely in my body the first mm -hmm. time I read the script. Um, it's also a very physical role that you have to play. This is a mixed martial artist uh, fighter. And um, I'm just curious for, for um, for that part of the role, for the, the the physicality of it, for the actual training, what did you have to go through, or did you happen to have some MMA background that we don't know about? <laughs> I didn't have any MMA background other than a supreme love of the sport um, and an interest in learning everything I could about it. I went on a two and a half year journey of training and learning many of the dis different disciplines from jujitsu to uh, taekwondo to judo to wrestling to boxing kickboxing muay thai i studied many of those different disciplines and sort of came up with a fighting style for this character but it was about a two and a half year uh proposition mm -hmm. it feels real i mean i don't i don't follow mma in a, in a big way but those fight scenes especially the big fight at the climax are, are really spectacular um, there are so many uh, boxing movies, uh, not that much in terms of MMA. Did you have to come up with a, a visual style as a director in terms of how you're going to shoot the fights? I did, and I, and I wanted to somehow, you know, keep this film squarely in the genre because this is a genre that people over the years traditionally have loved so much. So I wanted to have it feel similar in a way, but I also challenged myself and everyone around me to think of new ways to shoot something, new ways to shoot fighting. So I was determined never to show anybody punching a boxing bag or not to yeah. show roping, like to show sort of new facets to training and especially martial arts training. It's very different than English boxing and I wanted to try to bring as many of those different elements to these training sequences as I possibly could. And I also wanted the real community, the, you know, the UFC, the MMA community, Bellator, and Victa. I wanted all the fighters in those leagues to, you know, hopefully see this movie and really see themselves in it and find mm -hmm. and have them find that it was an accurate depiction of their world. Wow. Um, in addition to the fighting, because the movie's not just about fighting, it's also a very powerful emotional story as well. And you've cast these remarkable actors uh, alongside you. And I wonder if you could tell us a little bit, now that we have them here, and you can embarrass them. I know. <laughs> can you tell us a little bit about why you cast each one? Oh my God. The first thing I want to say, when I got advice from some of the directors that I admire and love so much, the first thing they said to me was script, 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 and then cast it right. Mm -hmm. Your biggest job as a director will be to find the actors that you really need. and. When I tell you that they were my greatest gift because these every actor in this movie, hands down, are, are masters of their craft and they brought it for, for this movie. So where should we start? Okay, Sheila. Sheila who plays Budokan. She was the first character that I actually cast. She was the first one that I saw for the role and I subsequently saw 
many others after her, but the first time I saw her, I said to my casting director, um, Avi Kaufman, she's the one. She's the one. And there was something about her audition that just stood her above everyone else. Her 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 sincerity, her acting ability, her command of the character. And I hadn't even had a conversation with her about the character. It was her own interpretation of the material. And she 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 just blew me away, blew me away. And I say she was my first one I cast. She was the last one to actually get the job because we had all this red tape to go through, getting her from the UK and getting uh, her right. permit. And so mm -hmm. there was a time when I thought it wouldn't happen. And I, and I, I thought I was going to have to kill myself because I knew that I had to have her. That character was so important. Um, and you know, when I researched Sheila, she's a beautiful singer, a stage actress that English trained, you know, they they just have a different technique, I think, than we're not always used to seeing over here in the United States. And she brings all of that um, all of that talent with her. So mm -hmm. she blew me away. And then we have Aiden, my Desi, who I spent a long time looking for also because that was a very key role. And I needed to find someone that had, you know, a raw sex appeal um, because he does play my love interest. And he had to, you had to believe that he was a former fighter. Mm -hmm. And you also had to believe that he was dangerous at the same time, that there had to be something dangerous about him, but also very likable at the same time. So he had to be very complicated and complex. Mm -hmm. And I found that very hard to find until I came across Aiden, who also auditioned and just blew me out of the water because he had all of those, all of those colors. Mm -hmm. um, and I thought he really brought Desi to life in a beautiful way. And then we get to Shamir here, who has to carry the name Immaculate. Immaculate. So, <laughs> so already you know you have to have, <laughs> you have to have someone like Shamir. You have to have someone who has a bit of a bigger than life persona when they walk in the room. You have to feel their presence before you even see them. You have to know they're standing behind you somehow. And Shamir has that. Not only does he have acting chops and he's a talented actor, but he also has that quality that, you know, you can't teach. You have to sort of be born with that. And he has that commanding presence without mm -hmm. even opening his mouth. He says so much. Mm -hmm. when I, got to meet Shamir right away, I thought, wow, he's yes, awesome. yes. He's All exactly right. I, I want to hear a little bit from each one of uh, your actors as well. Uh, Shamir, let, let's start with you. Um, Tiff Rising Star, Toronto Zone, Scarborough Zone, a lot of people uh, here know you. Uh, this movie, I think, is going to take you even to another level because your performance is, is very strong. What I'm interested in is your voice, the cadence of your voice uh, that, that you give to Immaculate, because it's almost this, like he's a little bit kind of behind the beat, you know, he has a slyness to him, almost like a jazz musician yeah. or a blues musician. Can you talk about how you found the voice for Immaculate? Uh, a great question, Cameron. And um, it's so funny you asked that because that was the first part of the process for me as an artist and as an actor. It's about finding the walk, it's about finding the talk, it's about finding the mindset. And um, I'm Canadian and uh, from Toronto, Scarborough, and Immaculate is from the New York area, you know, Brooklyn, maybe Bronx, spent some time in Jersey. And I spent some time with a lot of individuals on my off time, just kind of being in the streets, hearing some of the, 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 the slangs, the words, the, the cadence, but also studying a lot of guys from the 90s. I think he was very inspired by the 90s, a lot of rap stars. You know, I won't give specific names because then you'll start extrapolating my performance and saying, oh, that rapper, he did this, he did this. You know, but I really wanted to immerse myself into his space. And I felt like with a name like Immaculate, he was really in his own world. And he kind of created the rhythm and he created the flow. He didn't go with it. And so that was a huge part of my development and process with the character and just really working with the incredible team that Hallie brought to the, to, to the set every day and just listening to Hallie, listening to my co-stars and, and just really trying to be a fly on the wall and, and really understanding the world that incredible writer uh, Michelle built and then and, and Hallie you know put together and just 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 really being in that space and doing my best to stay in that voice nonstop. so thank you for noticing it's something I really worked hard on. Mm -hmm. um, Aiden you you got a tough role to play because you're Hallie's love interest uh, in the first part of the film but you're also 
uh, a guy who treats her character pretty badly. Um, and I, I know that an actor has to find a reason why. And I wondered as you were working through how you're gonna portray this, this character, what was his reason why? That's a, that's a really good question. Um, I, it, it took me about uh, a couple of weeks to really find his heartbeat, I think. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I guess bottom line, I really wanted to find his relationship to himself, to Hallie's character, and, uh, you know, ultimately then to the little boy, which, which brings so much to the table for him. And so much so, in fact, that it reminded him, in, in my mind, the way I, I sort of uh, settled into it all was, um, in fact, seeing, you know, the little boy right there, it, it just automatically brought me as an actor and already in Desi's shoes into the realm of uh, what happens in that pivotal moment to growing up as a boy, uh, fatherless, you know, in those kind of circumstances. Uh, and it's it's almost like he it, it reminded him of, of, of possibly himself and and uh i i see desi as somebody who at some point cared and he still cares too much i know i certainly played him that way somebody who who uh at some point committed everything in his life to something mm -hmm. and something happened along the way where he lost himself okay you know uh, and, and and then that what what happens to the you, you know you, that that's frustration you start blaming the world you start trying to find mm -hmm. other other things to to put the weight on but just right. take it off yourself you okay. know and and that being said it was uh you know with with, with Jackie it's 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 love and hate it's mm -hmm. she's doing the thing that Desi was meant to do all of his life and now he can't right. nice. he believes in her. Yeah, you know, immensely, and deep inside, there's a massive love and and admiration for her. But at the same time, he struggles with the uh, maybe a little bit of jealousy about it. You know, I think I I think I I, I sensed that and I, I played that out. Hmm. Use those buttons. Yeah, um, Sheila, I want to ask you about your character from the context of of some of these same emotions: the love, the passion, the the conflict that that uh, your character Bobby. Uh, feels through the film. There's also this incredible, um, so, uh, like a hard shell and a vulnerability. And I know it's sometimes hard to play both. You have a remarkable resume. People might not know all of the work you've done on stage uh, in the UK, the Olivier Award, uh, your music, your playwriting, all of the, the things you've done. You're bringing a wealth of knowledge and experience to playing Bobby. Can you talk a little bit about, about that tension within that character? Yeah. Um, firstly, it was really interesting for me that um, Hallie was keen on me keeping my own accent. I actually auditioned in my own accent mm. because I I don't even know why. I just kind of ended up doing myself taking my own accent and Hallie really wanted to keep that, which I was really excited about um, because it gave Budokan this sense of otherness. You don't really know how she got to being in New Jersey with all of these characters. It never really gets explained, but you get the sense that she's lived so many lives. Um, and she's also got this spiritual side to her that is clearly a part of this kind of ongoing journey of growth that she's trying to go through, um, you know, and trying to stay off the alcohol and so forth. So for me, it was about trying to keep the mystery of this person. Um, but also making sure it wasn't just vague and it wasn't just the absence of um, detail and context. Mm. Um, and I think she's just, she's lived a lot of lives. She's, she's seen a lot of stuff. Um, she's been through a lot. And, you know, with, with people who have those experiences, it is a constant struggle every day, mm -hmm. um, particularly if you are dealing with some kind of addiction, as she is, um, or you are dealing with pain and hurt from the past. Um, in, in, in my opinion, she moved around a lot. So it wasn't just the case that she came from uh, East London and ended up in New Jersey and that was it. I think she's, she's been all over the world. Mm -hmm. um, and so she's picked up all of those different experiences and they've formed these different chapters in her life. 
And so that's how I, I tried really hard to sort of infuse the, the character that we see over the course of the film. It does feel like there's a lot of layers to her. Like yeah, a lot of backstory. You can trying tell. to negotiate all of them, you know. And then she meets Jackie, and Jackie is a person who, you know, and Manny, um, her son, and these are people who spark something in her, something mm -hmm. that's been buried for a long time. I think sometimes when you are trying to um, negotiate lots of difficult things within your life, it becomes easier to be kind of single-minded in a sense, mm -hmm. um, you push certain things out just you know, to, for the expediency of being able to deal with a few things. Mm -hmm. um, and I think, you know, Jackie kind of sparks the resurgence of feelings that Bobby hasn't felt for a long time. So dealing with those is, is a new challenge for her. Mm. Thank you. Um, I want to go to you for the last question, Hallie. I think most of us remember your Oscar speech when you won uh, Best Actress for Monsters Ball and you connected your achievement that night on the Oscar stage to the black women who'd gone before you. Um, and I wonder in making your debut as a filmmaker at a time when there's this incredible surge in creativity from black filmmakers uh, on TV and in film, there's so much great work coming up right now. Is there a legacy that you're connecting yourself to that you feel connected to as a, as a director now as well? Well, I think it's because of all of that energy that I myself, um, I, I think, decided to tackle directing because I now knew that I could because there have been others before me now who've been daring to do just that. And that gave me the confidence that, oh, I have a story to tell. I have things that are important to me that I also want to say and that I can actually do that. So. If there's a, a legacy left, I hope it continues to be that we can dare to do whatever we believe we can do, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think I've tried to live with that belief in the back of my mind since I started. I've dared to dream that I can do things just because no one had done it before me didn't mean that I couldn't do it. Mm -hmm. And I will continue to push the boundary and continue to do things that inspire me, that challenge me, even if I haven't done it before. Thank you. Hallie, make some more movies. Bring them to Toronto. <laughs> bring them all over the world. But we want to see them here, too, OK? Yeah, thank you. <laughs> all thank right. You so much thank for you Shamir Anderson, Aiden Canto, Sheila Atim, and director and star of Bruce Halle Berry. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. All right.